professor, physician, epidemiologist. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee, and in this video, I will be going over how to conduct a complex samples analysis. Uh, more specifically, I will be going over um, how to conduct a specific type of bivariate analysis, which is uh, chi-square. Um, so in complex samples chi-square, this is a bit different than um, regular chi-square, um, and it, this is a different menu item. Um, and the reason you're having to use a, a slightly varied um, type of analysis um, is because you're trying to infer your findings for the general population. So um, making use of the estimates um, that you uh, are are are, are um, conducting here making use of the estimates um, within your findings is extremely important so let's go ahead and get started this is national health and nutrition examination survey between the years of 1999 and 2010 so i've already compiled all of this information within um, this one data set this is um, roughly 150 variables um, and you can see uh, some of the variables in view. Um, the one that is actually highlighted is C-reactive protein. And if you um, watch my videos, a lot of them actually um, go over the details of um, this extremely important biomarker, which I um, not only conducted my um, dissertation, my um, my doctoral dissertation on, but I've written extensively on um, in my other works and um, have also uh, produce some information within my website, um, which you can go visit. Okay, um, so if we look at um, under analyze and then go down, um, one thing to note, of course, is where um, the regular chi-square is um, located. So when you're thinking about um, descriptive statistics, um, you want to be thinking about that. But when you're thinking about chi-square, when it pertains to complex samples, um, first you want to make sure that you have prepared an analysis. So that I go over in another video, so um, I won't be actually re revisiting that here. But what is more important is to try to determine where exactly uh, you complete the chi-square. Um, and what is interesting, what you'll find, is that um, this is actually not specifically mentioned. So um, let's take a look at descriptives, frequencies. Um, and if we look at the um, descriptives, um, there is the plan. And so um, you have for uh, the measures and the subpopulations. And then under the statistics, you'll see that. Now, in here, do you see anything that uh, resembles chi-square or anything remotely similar? No. So um, it's good to visit this, but uh, this is not actually um, the measure that we were after. So um, let's go back and take a look and see if there's another one that actually fits the bill a little bit better. Um, and so, of course, you want to go through the cross tabs. You want to go through the CSA plan. Um, and that was the correct CSA plan. And so this is more resembling something that I was looking for. So this is the cross tabs menu um, where the chi-square resides. Um, so as you can see, I, I was looking for a variable um, that makes sense here. Um, and diabetes is a variable that makes sense to me because I've done so much research on it. But not only that, um, it is a chronic disease which affects um, quite a few um, individuals all around the world. So of course, um, there is a clear link between diabetes and cardiovascular disease. but um, we want to try and test that out um, in the context of um, our data set here. Um, so cardiovascular disease um, includes everything um, from hypertension to the occurrence of stroke to um, coronary heart disease um, uh, to uh, various other conditions um, that have been identified. So um, these were all combined. Um, so these are that that is actually a composite variable that I created from um, other variables 
um, according to uh, previously um, accepted methods that have been uh, outlined within the literature. Um, so what do you want to select here is column percentage, uh, population size, standard error, odds, ratio, relative risk if you want both. Um, and what is important here is test of independence of rows and columns. This is what you want to select. And what is important is that you're actually looking at the F value. Um, you're um, not really specifically looking at chi-square, but, but the F value is what you're using to then determine independence, which is why it's not ex explicitly stated as chi-square. So then um, you run the analysis and see um, you have a data table. And um, as you can see, there is uh, uh, percentage differences. Um, if you look at the percentage of individuals um, that experience both experience cardiovascular disease um, and and um, diabetes, the percentage of people um, who have cardiovascular disease and are simultaneously experiencing um, diabetes is 25.8 percent. So versus individuals that don't have cardiovascular disease and experiencing diabetes, that's only 6.1%. So this is a striking difference and that is reflected by uh, the p-value of less than 0.001. So I've here I'm not only conducted a uh, unique original research question from a nationally representative data set, data set nationally health and nutrition examination survey, but also I've shown you how to um, run the analysis um, and also uh, a chi-square and a adjusted F value um, for which the significance has been um, provided. And then you can come up with your own conclusion, um, which shows that there is in fact a significant association between uh, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Thank you for, for listening to this video.